Welcome back to TV4 News. Today we have received the judgment of Datuk Sri Dina, a petition from Slay Party on a bribery case that happened in 2017. The High Court of Kuala Lumpur found Datuk Sri Dina guilty and sentenced her to five years of imprisonment. Thank you. Hey, isn't that the famous politician? Is she going to share the same cell as us? I thought she's going to receive a different treatment than us. I can't believe she will share the same cell as us. I don't think I need to introduce myself to you guys, right? You guys know me well, right? I'm all over the TV and all over the nation. Yeah, we all know you already. <laughs> By the way, are you not going to run for the upcoming election? Is she applicable for that though? She's in prison now. How can she run for the election? Hey, do not look down on me, okay? I have eight lawyers that I can defend for myself and I'm going to make sure that I can run for the election. And do not forget to vote for me, okay? Oh, I didn't know that I can vote. I thought that my el eligibility to vote had lost ever since I have become a prisoner. I want to run for the upcoming election that will be held around this November. Please make sure that I can get myself in for the election. Back with me on TV4 News. Our election is just around the corner and the candidates has been announced. SPR, the election committee, has made a strong statement that Dato Sri Dina will not run for the election this year. That is all from me. Do not forget to cast your vote this November. Remember that every vote matters. Thank you. Assalamualaikum and good morning. My name is Rabiato and together with me today is a group of brilliant lawyers that will discuss uh, the issue of whether a convicted person can run for election. So first of all, we have Miss Sarah George, Miss Sarita, Miss Natasha, Miss Fadila, Miss Azlina, Miss Sofia, and Miss Alia Zamini. So now I would like to briefly explain on the question of who is a convicted person. A convict is a person who has been found guilty or convicted of a crime or criminal offence following a trial guilty plea and is currently serving a sentence in prison. A convicted person can somehow be seen as a social threat to the society as for the crime they had done and the court has made a rightful decision on them as they are found guilty. However, all prisoners shall be treated equally and with respect due to their inherent dignity and value as a, uh, as a human being. There shall be no uh, discrimination on the grounds of race, sex, um, religion, or political views, and other status. So now I would like to pass the floor to Ms. Sarah Josh to further explain on the eligibility of a convicted person to run for election. Thank you. According to the Malaysian Bar, any Malaysian living in Malaysia who is at least 21 years old, they can take part in an election to become an MP. However, they can't become an MP if they are unsound mind, bankrupt, post an office of profit, spends more money than is allowed under the law of his or her election campaign, found guilty of the crime where the punishment is jail term of one year or more, or when they become citizens of another country and they declare their declarations of loyalty towards that country. Thank you. Okay, next I'll further explain on the jurisprudent view on the right and liberty of a convicted person. So according to Hoffer, there are four types of right. Uh, firstly, the, um, the claiming right. The secondly is the liberties right. Thirdly is the privileges and fourth is the power. So in this sense, in the sense of a convicted person, we categorize this uh, situation as a privileges. What is really privileges? Privileges is uh, something that can uh, that can be done without any obstacles. So uh, for instance, in our situation right now, a convicted person uh, can choose to vote for any person that he wants and that such privileges shouldn't be taken away from him. So, yes, we can call this as a privileges given to a convicted person. I would like to add from what Miss Natasha has said, we can look into a different theory which is the Dworkin's theory, where he focuses on the theory of rights. According to him, the judges must always try to uphold the rights of the parties. 
Dworkin holds that the individual right has more priorities than the policies and rules that have been designed for the general welfare. Dworkin also traces the most basic right, which is the right for equal treatment. He focuses on every human shall not be subjected to torture, cruel, inhuman or degrading treatment. The right to equal treatment means the right to receive the same services as everyone. So from this, we also can look into where uh, we also can connect that convicted person has to get his rights and to be treated as the equal person. A person will not be eligible to serve as a member of either House of Malaysian Parliament under Article 48, Clause 1, Paragraph 8 of the Federal Constitution if a court finds him 2,000 ringgit or more if he is found guilty of a crime. Additionally, Regulation Section 7, Subsection 1C of the Election Regulation 1981 stipulates, among other things, that a returning officer must reject a candidate's nomination paper if they are ineligible to serve in the House of Representatives under the Constitution. Therefore, a person is disqualified from holding the office of Member of Parliament as well as from running in a parliamentary or state election or by any election under Article 48, Clause 1, Paragraph E of the Constitution and Rule Section 7, Subsection 1C of the Elections Regulations 1981. According to Article 48 1E of the Federal Constitution, a person who is convicted is disqualified for being a Member of House Parliament However, in special or rare cases, a convicted person can run for election if he or she gets the royal pardon. Well, this is according to Article 42 of the Federal Constitution, which stated that the, the young people to an ago has power to grant pardons, reprieve and respite in respect of all offences which have been tried by court martial and all offences committed in the federal territories of Kuala Lumpur and Labuan. For instance, in 2018, Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim, who was convicted for imprisonment, got the full royal pardon from Yang Dipertuan Agong, and he ran for election. Whilst based on this case, it is possible for a person who was convicted with imprisonment to run for election if they receive the full royal pardon. To answer, in regard to the question that was asked by Yosemite on whether prisoners can vote during election, we must first take a look at the judgment made by the High Court in a test case. In this case, the High Court ruled that prisoners can vote during election if he has registered as voter before his conviction. But the Election Commission has no power to bring him to the polling station in order for him to cast his vote. It was held that the prisoners had to apply to Prisons Department Director General in order to make time for him to vote. Therefore, sir, if you wish to vote during this upcoming election, you must first make sure that you have registered as voters before your conviction and if you do, you have to apply for the arrangement for the time for you to vote. I hope that is clear enough for you. Thank you. The right to vote is set out in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, UHR, which provides under Article 21 that everyone has the right to take part in the government of his country directly or through freely chosen representative. UDHR has a binding status since it is a customary international law. However, countries have taken different approaches on voting rights for prisoners since there is no specific provision on it. The rationale behind countries restricting the right to vote of prisoners is due to multiple reasonings. Uh, for instance, in Ukraine, prisoners are not entitled to vote in local elections as they are not deemed to be part of a local community during their imprisonment. In Poland, the main criterion that the court may impose deprivation of public rights includes criminal offence that was committed with motivation deserving special condemnation. In Belgium, judges apply the proportionality test in which they must balance the possibility of excluding unworthy citizens from exercising their right to vote with requirement not to deprive them disproportionately of a fundamental right. In Brazil, restriction of voting rights is justified on ethical grounds that it would be morally unacceptable for a person convicted of crime to participate in the country's political life, whether voting or running for office. All in all, prisoners of most countries will be disenfranchised while they are serving prison sentences, as it is deemed to be morally inappropriate to do so.